Greetings and welcome to Smartwatch Ticks. We're a YouTube channel on the web at smartwatchticks.com and today, in 10 minutes or less, I'm going to show you how to take just about any Android smartwatch and put a really simple black and white digital always on screen on your watch. You ready to go? 80% of you are going to get what you need in two minutes. The rest of you are going to get the rest of it in the whole video. It's called the Pareto Principle. 20% of the input accounts for 80% of the output. So with that said, I'm not going to give you right away always on capability, but I can give it to you for up to 30 minutes. Here's what you do. Turn your watch on. Slide over to Settings. In Settings, go to Display. In Display, go to Sleep Time. And in sleep time, which changes from 15 seconds up to 30 minutes, go ahead and select 30 minutes. Okay? Then back out of that, get back to your watch face. Here's the, here's the real trick. Press and hold, and there you come up with your power off and reboot. And this is that little thing you can change the uh, circle or square for your third-party apps to fit on the screen. Well, there's one called power save. Tap power save, hit cancel. There you go. There's your digital display with power. What am I? Oh, oh, it went off. Yes, it will, the very first time. But now, if you press the button again and turn it on, you've activated it for the length of time that you set in your display brightness. For the next 30 minutes, this watch will remain on, showing you your power level and your time with a little X button that you can cancel out of it when you tap it. And if you don't tap it, it'll stay on like that when you do, you're right back out of it. Bing! Bye, everybody! The rest of you that want to really have it 24-7, always on, stick with me now. By the way, this is the, uh, the Prime, the Cospet Prime, also called the A-Watch SE, I believe it is, by all call. Now, for the advanced version, where you get 24-7, always on, display. We're going to switch and show you how to do that on the Kronos Blade Genesis watch with the front-facing camera. Really sweet watch. Same concept. I'm going to press and hold on the side. I'm going to hit power save and I'm going to hit cancel and there we are. Notice on their implementation it's a little bit better and cleaner I think. See there it went off. Press it and now it's back on for the duration that I've set which is forever. And I'll show you that trick. Um, but here, we don't have the little X that you saw on this one and on pretty much all the others. Whoops. Bounced out of it. There we go. There we go. You see the X right there? You can accidentally touch that and take it out. I don't have that on this one. There's no way to get out of it by touching it one time, like that X. However, if you double tap on the actual battery power level, Boom, boom, you're exiting it. What you may have noticed on this one is this little white dot over here. Let's go into there again. Power save. Cancel. We're in it. The little white dot stays on the screen. It's part of a thing called Floating Toucher. I've talked about that a lot. It's an app that's no longer in the Google Play Store because it's so darn powerful. Um, but I do have an archive copy of it in our uh, resource guide. And if you look in the show notes of this video, you'll get a link over there that you can download Floating Toucher. When you launch Floating Toucher, I'm going to touch the button. It literally floats things that you can do on top of the screen. And you see uh, right here in the left of the little lock, there's a circle right there. And inside of it, I don't know if you can see that or not, but it has an infinity sign. You see there? There's a little infinity sign. Now this is the same thing as your display timeout. If I touch it one time, you see it went to 15 seconds. And it'll do exactly the same as what you would do if you went to settings. I can keep changing it, keep changing it. But it has one addition, and that's infinity. Infinity means the display will never go off. Now, it's not normally this way when you get display uh, or floating toucher. But you can go in here, which is the settings, and you can modify any of these positions 
right here. And the thing that I made it was screen timeout like that. Simple as that. Exit out of here. I'm back to this page. That is so cool. So right now, this is set to never time out. It'll run the battery out first. The screen will not go off unless you double tap there, press and hold here, or um, go in and change the screen time out to something less, and then the screen will just go off. Okay? You with me now? All right. Remember, it's the Pareto Principle. 20% of your effort, which was not even using floating toucher, will give you 80% of your goal to have a... a, a a watch that's got the always on time. If uh, you need it on more than 30 minutes, you need to put in the effort for the other 80%, which is what I'm telling you with the floating toucher. The, um, it, the other way around it is you just work it for 30 minutes and you just um, touch the button and turn it back on if it goes off um, to, to reactivate it. All of these other watches, all of them, let's see, I've got... Um, You've seen these with the already always on time display. This is the uh, LOK02, which is a lot like the Thor 4 Dual. It's got uh, already this ambient mode built into it, but if it's too dim for you, sure enough, you can press and hold, power save, cancel, and you got the digital display. And again, it's going to go immediately off. Press it one more time, and now it'll stay on for as long as you've set in the timing thing. Here's another one. This is the uh, Optimus Pro. You guys know that watch. Same thing. Can you see it? It's a dim analog display. Not good enough for you outdoors. Turn it on. Press and hold. Power save. Cancel. Turn it off. Turn it on. Now you're, you're good to go with a nice bright. Oh, look at that. It overrode me. There we go. Now it's on with a nice bright uh, display that's much brighter than the analog one that was on there as well. This one, because it has a short timeout, has already popped out of it. We have more. This is, um, gosh, this is stretching way, way back. This is that transflective screen of the Thor Pro. It's an old Android um, 5.1 watch, but it works. It's got the same thing built into it. Goes off, press it. Turn it back on. Good to go for as long as the screen timeout. Or you see I have floating toucher on here. I can set this all the way up to infinity again. Are we at infinity? Nope. Five minutes. 30 minutes. There we go. Infinity. Yeah. And now I can go home. Swipe out of it. And this one's on. So... Even the rectangular one, sure. Yeah, this is the uh, LEM uh, 10, right? Power save, cancel, got it on there. Even, even the big monster. Uh huh. <laughs> the LEM T, we can press and hold, power save, cancel, and you're here. So it's on all of these watches, folks. Every one of them can support it for up to 30 minutes. And with the addition of floating toucher, you can bump it up to infinity. And again, you can download floating toucher as an app from our uh, smartwatch resource guide. All right, I'll tell you the link, but you can look at it in there. Click it right in your show notes. Tinyurl, T-I-N-Y-U-R-L dot com slash Android watches. All one word. Link to there. You get a whole bunch of different resources. And the Pareto Principle applies to everything. It's not just watches and whether you get 20% of the, of the time that you want or with, with 80% of the effort or vice versa. It also applies to your closet. <laughs> when I was searching for a graphic to explain this, I came across this one. It's got to be the best. In your closet. 20% of your pants are yoga pants, right? And 80% are your other clothes. But what do you wear? Wow. How often do you wear your yoga pants? 80% of the time. Right, guys? 20% of the time you wear your other clothes. So just check it out. The Pareto Principle, the 2080 Law, and always on displays on all Android watches. Super simple. Give it a try. 
think you'll like it. All right, thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon. Check it out, 10 minutes exactly. What'd I tell you, huh? Okay, that's the video. This next section's for my subscribers. Uh, I know you guys like to go a lot deeper than this surface level, so if you're not a subscriber, um, you could either subscribe or, yeah, find another video. Uh, but if you are a subscriber and you wanna see some advanced features of what we're doing here, by the way, notice I got them all on. They're all set to infinity and they're just running beautifully in this mode. This is true magic. Not only do you have uh, a low powered, always on display happening, but with the floating toucher, you have access to pretty much everything in your watch as well. Word of notice on this, when you go into this mode, it's shutting everything down. It's a power save mode, so you don't have your radios. If you're tethered to your phone, you're not going to get notifications. You're not going to find your phone if you've lost it. You're not going to you know, have any of that kind of stuff happening because Bluetooth is off. If you uh, have a SIM card in it, you're expecting to get phone calls. Cellular is off. You have no GPS and you're not on Wi-Fi. But if you're going out and you don't need any of that stuff and you want your battery to last a long time, but still have access to pretty much anything in your watch when you need it and when you leave it, it's gone and you're back to this mode, then this is really, really working. When you have the floating toucher in here and you tap it, one of the uh, squares that's always in it is the one just to the right of the lock. By the way, the lock is supposed to just shut your watch off. That's, that's what it does. And you press it and it'll come back. So if you want to turn it off and you don't want to use the button over and over again, floating toucher, if you get it just right to launch it, and then hit the lock key. But the one to the right of that brings up all the apps in your watch in alphabetical order, floating on top of that low power screen. So whatever you want to go into, music, maps, how about... A little koi pond okay i'm in the low power power savings mode behind this but i've launched this particular app that's running here i've also installed display brightness that's also in the same resource center it's a little slider bar that i usually put on the right hand side just below the button go away fish they like to come over here i think they sense the power see this see the percentage changing on the screen I can go down negative 50%. You probably can't even see that. That's below the lowest level of zero. And of course I could set it up to a hundred. So on any of my apps, even that screen, I can um, take advantage of the display brightness, which also floats on top. So I can swipe out of here, exit it. It's got all that stuff going on there. Now I'm right back to the same ambient digital screen with access to floating toucher. So I can take this down to really, really low levels at night or fully bright to see out in the daylight. Display brightness, floating toucher. There's so much more to this because I can get into here, I can get into my system stuff if I want to and change systems. I set this up with a volume control here so I can immediately control right on the screen my volume level. So if I'm playing music and I'm and that's just floating over the music player I just tap that and I can adjust the volume if I want on and on and on but just uh, just know that the combination of using this special power save button blended with floating toucher and display brightness gives you a whole new way of working with your Android smartwatch after you get over all the joy of having 500 watch faces to choose from and you start to get practical, this is going to really kick in and make sense for you because it really works. Let's set these apps up now, both floating toucher and display brightness. I'm going to demo for you on the All Call A Watch GT, which is the same as the Cospet Prime. I'm presuming you got it set up a little bit. And we'll walk through that. If you got it just out of the box, you want to make sure Wi-Fi is turned on. If you press and hold, it'll take you into Wi-Fi. You find your router, you make sure you're connect to it, and it should say connect it. Okay? I'm presuming you're with me all that way. 
Now, the next thing you're going to want to do is go to the browser that you can generally see in here by just sliding around. Or if you've already installed your favorite browser, uh, that's perfect. But we're just going to use the stock browser that comes with it. Now, I've already opened it. I've set it for a square instead of a circle. That means it'll be right inside the screen so we can work with it a little easier. And if I hit recent tasks, there's settings, there's browser. I'm coming over here and you see I put in something called tiny URL. Well, it actually needs to be longer than that. It's a web address that's going to take you to the place that you can download right on the watch both of these apps. It's tinyurl.com slash Android Watches. When you get there, you're going to be looking for something entitled the copy of floating toucher and copy of display brightness. Let's take you there now. So the reason we need to, uh, to do it this way by using the tinyurl link as opposed to going to the Google Play Store is because these apps are no longer in the Play Store. So when you get to the browser, don't put it in the Google search term, but put it up at the very top where you put in the address bar. When you do, it's going to map to this thing, which is drive.google.com, which is my um, Google Drive that's shared with you guys. And when you're there, you get a bunch of different stuff. Here's some folders that have some things in it. When you scroll down, you start seeing some files you can go into. There's an old spreadsheet even here comparing Android watches. And finally, you get to the things that say copy to or copy of. And uh, this is where you want to download the actual um, apps themselves. Unfortunately, we're not seeing the whole name here. So we've got to come up here and we've got to sort by name. And there we go. There we go. It's that button. You're going to switch so you can display all of this stuff by name rather than by those boxes, right? So as we come down now, Good thing we're going through this together, right? There's all those documents. There's the copy twos. Okay, we have a few different things. Display is for display brightness and floating is floating toucher. So let's download um, the display brightness. We're gonna tap on it. Okay, let's uh, copy of DI for display brightness. We hit download, give it a moment. And there we go, copy of display brightness, come back from here, come back from here. Let's go to floating toucher, copy of FL shows up there, download, give it a second, and there they are. Now, if you wanted to delete them off of here, and you can later after you install them, you just simply press and hold, and it'll give you the option to delete. But we don't want to delete them until we install them. So let's take display brightness, and now look at this, for security purposes, your phone's set to block installation of apps obtained from unknown sources. This is an unknown source. So you're warned, you're not getting it from the Google Play Store, but it's not in the Play Store. So we're kind of stuck. I've used this one over and over. You've seen me use it. I've talked about it. I'm really confident that it's fine with no viruses. So I'm coming in here and I want to uh, turn on unknown sources. You only have to do this once, the first time. It says your watch and so forth, gives you all that big warning. Don't do this if you don't want to. And if you do turn this on, be very careful the places that you go to download things that are not through the Google Play Store. We have unknown sources turned on. We're back. We're gonna do it all over again. Gonna hit display brightness. Now it's gonna let us install it. And we do that. Okay. Google wants to check to make sure there's nothing security wrong with whatever you're doing. Up to you if you want to do this. We haven't even logged into Google yet. I'm just going to go ahead and say accept so it doesn't hinder my installation process. Um, and then we go to here and now we're, we're, we have it installed. So we're done. I could open it now and start 
setting it up, but I don't want to. I want to get the other one. I'm going to say done. I'm done with the installation. This was the APK, the installation package. So I can press and hold and say OK to delete floating uh, display brightness. Now I'm going to tap one time. Notice I don't have to go through all that other stuff again. These are all the things it tells you it's going to do. And floating toucher does a lot because it floats over everything. Going to install it and let it go. And it's done also. I could open it and start setting it up, but I'm going to go done, press and hold, and delete the installation file. Now my documents folder is clean. I mean, you got 32 gigabytes. I would recommend holding on to them in case you need to install them later, but up to you. I just wanted to show you how to clean everything up. Come back here. We're all done with everything. There's a lot of other apps in here. Gesture search, hay band, setting search I highly recommend. Uh, anyway, you can learn about all these. You can copy these over and do the installation if you want to. But we're only doing those two today. So we're basically done with the browser. So we can bail out of this thing all together. Back to our watch face. And now let's begin installing uh, or actually running them. Let's slide over and see what we've got. They should be installed probably at the bottom of all of these things. There's display brightness and floating toucher. You're doing good. You just downloaded apps from the web directly to your watch. Very, very good. Let's start with display brightness because it's quick and easy. I'm going to launch it. It, apps, uh, it, the, it says it's going to require extra permissions, which it does, which is an overlay thing uh, because it's going to overlay brightness level on top of your, your actual um, screen any of your screens so we tap on display brightness it says it's off we turn it on it grants access and here we go we're now in it um there's a tiny little sliding window that you can play with and then these are the the, the ways that you can enable or disable it and donation this is the free version it's not in the uh, Google Play Store, so you don't have to worry about a donation. There's no way of reaching these guys. I'm going to slide down until I get something that says words. Here you go. Top center. It's actually set for right here, but that sometimes gets in the way. It's up to you where you want it. I want it on the right-hand side. I'm going to say uh, change it from top center to right center. And there, you see it right there? Okay, it's, it's actually there. It's inset because it's within the square. But if I press and hold, change that to the full circle, now it's way over on the edge. And if I touch it, I can slide up and down, all the way down to 1%, which is plenty dark, all the way up to 100%. That's almost all you need to do, except if you want to make sure it's there all the time, you need to continue scrolling up, and way at the bottom, you have something that says shut after reboot system. You want to check that and um, start. It'll, re it'll start automatically when you reboot. The other one that's pretty nice is the auto hide the indicator. It's green right there. You see that? I'm going to click on that, but not right now. I want to show you something. The bar is centered over the camera, but actually we need that upper area to put the little dot for floating toucher. So to get them to work really nice together, I'm going to scroll back down here. By the way, you can uh, set the amount of range from 1% uh, to 100. So if 1% is too dark for you, you think it's too dim and you might not be able to uh, work with it, you can set the lower level higher or longer battery life, set the upper level as a maximum of 80% and your battery will last longer. You can play with that slide bar. But I want to play with the length slide bar, which is right here, right underneath where we changed it to right center. I'm going to take this lower one and move it like that. And I, I caused the range to go down a little bit. I'm going to go even a little further. Now, there's not much range to hit here. If I take this a little longer, I can go further down. But pretty soon it goes off the screen. Something about like that. Now I can still, if I know where it is, right next to the camera, I can still find it. Once you touch it once, you got anywhere on the screen, you can slide the whole thing up and down. The trick is just to make sure you can touch that area. It's wide enough to touch. You're not actually sliding within it. It's just the display. Okay, now I can come down here, auto hide it. You're going to see it disappear. Still there. I know it's there. It'll still work. 
but it's invisible. Pretty cool. Enable it, it already is enabled, and we're done. You can get out of here, and we're finished. Almost, there's a critical thing we gotta do for both of these, so don't go away. Woo! Okay, next thing is floating toucher. This is a little trickier. We're gonna go in here, it's got these four screens, yada, 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 and there's no way to get out of it. I think there might be a button down here. Let's see. You always test this stuff. Go back and forth. And nope, no way to get out of it. And that sometimes makes you think you're stuck. Well, you're not. You hit the back lower button one time. That bails you out of it and puts you into this screen here that says tap, uh, try to um, slide left and right. And you can. And... It talked about a pro version and stuff like that. Now, we're in Floating Toucher right now, and the settings icon is in the very middle. You know that you're in uh, what they call a pro version, uh, or the free version, when you got this little Christmas present thing down here. If you were to touch that, nothing happens. We're going to talk a little bit about what this all means in just a moment. Um, the little dot is on the screen here, but because I had this set for a square instead of a circle, it's indented a little bit. But it's way down here. If it moves off to the side, it's going to be interfering with that, that sliding bar too. So I'm going to grab the, the dot and bring it up a little bit, either even or just slightly above here. I'm going to change it to full screen. Ooh, it's almost too far. See that? I'm going to grab it and try to grab it and slide it there. Okay, that's a nice spot. I've got my display brightness bar. You see it right there underneath when it lights up and then fades out. And now I've got my floating toucher as well. I'm going to touch it and it activates it. Now I'm going to show you the quick and easy free thing because that's why you're here of setting your um, timeout to infinity. I usually replace the flashlight icon there uh, with it. I, I can't replace the present yet if it's free. Once it switches to, to the paid version, you can even put it there. But I'm just going to replace the flashlight uh, button here with that settings timeout, uh, screen timeout. I'm going to hit the center. That takes me into the overall settings. I'm going to tap the flashlight. And now I could select anything from the list, and screen timeout happens to be the first one. It just got replaced. I can slide out of here. When I tap the button again, there it is. Now I can toggle through, and there's infinity. See, I had it set for 30 minutes. One more tap takes me to infinity, which is not available in the system. If that's all you want to do with this, you're done, okay? If there's more you want to do with it, when you go into settings, you're going to find that some of these things, like the present, you tap on them and it says uh, you have to pay premium price or upgrade prices, and you could try to buy these things. What I've noticed is after a few days, this whole thing kind of times out and it flips over to the free version automatically. If it doesn't do that for you, make sure you're logged into Google, okay? Into the Google your Google account with access to the Google Play Store and pick one of these. I like to pick premium and say buy. It says the Google Play Store is not available. When you're logged in, it might say that it's no longer in the store. Whatever it says, you're kind of triggering a thread that might somehow cause it to flip to the paid version. When you're in the paid version, you have all kinds of things that you can do. You can change different pages. And this is really important to do, to get over here to this uh, point action. Did you see what I did there? Let's come back in here, back into here. I'm at custom, I'm sliding to the right, and I'm at pointers. And it says customize point action, and it won't let me do that. But when you can get in there, and you can, you want to change the point action that says if you long press on the button to hide the button. It turns out there's a glitch that doesn't work well with the watches to bring it back, and you might have to actually completely uninstall a floating toucher and reinstall it to get the, the, the button to come back. It's a little annoyance, but just until you've done that, just be real careful that you don't press long on it. You just give it a quick little tap like that and go to wherever you want to go. Speaking of where you may want to go, this upper right one, 
gives you all of your apps in alphabetical order. You can launch any of them from here. This top button allows you, once you accept locking the screen and you want to activate the device administrator, and you say OK for uninstalling it, that you need to turn that off. And now you've basically turned the watch off. So if the watch is on, wherever it's on, if it's on your watch face, oh no, the dot's gone. Ha ha ha. I told you there was a real important thing you got to do at the very uh, end of this video. We're covering it right now. Because I turned the watch off, a special selection in settings caused everything to quit. And you can't have that. So we come back to settings. Are you taking notes? It's a good thing you can rewind and replay this. In settings, you go all the way down here to more. In more, you go to background cleaner. In background cleaner, you make sure it's turned on. You tap it once. And all of your installed apps show up. If they're turned on, every time the watch closes, it quits them. And that saves on your battery. But you want these to run in the background. So turn it off and turn that off. Okay, that was in Battery Saver that you found in More when you went into Settings from your app drawer. Now you got to do one more thing and you got them going. You got to go all the way down. You got to run them once. Display brightness. I don't need to make any changes. I just need to run it. Hello, where'd you go? Okay, it's being funky on me because we're on camera. Do I have it running? No, it doesn't seem like it. So let's go back down here again. Display brightness. Hello. There we go. You see it lit up there. It came on. So I can leave it. Floating toucher. Touch it once. Whoops. 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 And it put the dot back up here. And I can go out of it. Now I've got my display brightness. I've got my floating touch your button that I was showing you. I can touch it. I can close the screen. I don't have to wear out my buttons when I turn the thing on. I do need to do that to turn it on. Now they come back no matter what screen you're in, including this one. And including, finally, if I press and hold here and I go to power save and I cancel out of here, there you go. I have the floating touch your button and I have the display brightness. It goes off the first time right away. Press it again. If I've set my timeout to infinity, this is, and I don't even need to swipe out of here. I can just go home and it'll take me right there. Or I could have turned the whole watch off by doing that. Touch it again. You're coming right back to here. You got it. You got it. There you go. The whole installation process right from the get go. All you need to do is get your brand new Android watch on Wi Fi. Follow the guidelines we were giving you. Go to the link tinyurl.com slash androidwatches. Make sure you set it in alphabetical order and set it up so you can see the words instead of the icons so you can make sure you're getting the right one. Download both of these. Install them to your watch. Go into them and configure them. Make sure you go to settings and set that background cleaner off for both of them. And you got yourself one really efficient smartwatch. I hope this helped you guys. I hope it helped you enough that you'll tell some of your friends that this is a cool channel so we can help build our numbers and get more viewers. And of course, your subscriptions really help. And in particular on this one, a nice thumbs up if you like it. That would be really great too. Google picks that up and that's how you end up seeing these things uh, as suggested videos. We will see you again soon. A long, long video. You only needed the first two minutes to get 80% of this. But those of you that stuck all the way are now 100%. And I am really happy. I'm 100% happy too. Okay. We got much more coming up, including the full review of this watch, which I haven't even put up yet, but I finished. So next review will be on the uh, all call AW. No, all call a watch. SE. So many names, so many numbers. All right. Stay tuned for that one.